live from the American Riviera in Santa Barbara, California, please welcome the host of Ken Boxer Live, Mr. Ken Boxer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to another edition of Ken Boxer Live. I'm your host, Ken Boxer. You know him as the adorable, lovable Theodore Beaver Cleaver from the iconic television show, Leave it to Beaver. Well, tonight, joining us this half hour is the very talented actor, Jerry Mathers. What you may not know, however, is that Jerry's been acting since the age of two. In fact, Jerry Mathers has worked with some of the heavyweights in the industry, Alfred Hitchcock, Alan Ladd, Bob Hope, and Frank Sinatra, just to name a few. And we've snagged Jerry from his very busy schedule just to be with us tonight on Ken Boxer Live. So let's meet and welcome the multi-talented actor and one of America's most adored pop culture figures, Jerry Mathers. Welcome to our show. Thank you, Jerry. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, I've been trying to get you on the show for a while and you, we finally connected. I'm so happy good you're here. It's a good, well, thank you for inviting me. I've, you know, the question I've, I've often wondered to ask is, when you were doing the show, did you know at the time, even though you're a young child, how old were you when you started? Uh, about six, when we actually did the pilot, and by the time we really started filming the Leave it to Beaver, I was almost a little over seven. Did you know then, at that time, that there was something special? No, no, the, not at all. Show? I mean, I, I worked since I was two years old, so I've, I've done movies. I didn't do any, any other series, but I had done a lot of movies and things like that. So, in fact, every year it was, um, a question whether we would come back for the next year because you had to be picked up. So you'd do 39 shows and then we'd go to New York and meet um, all the press. And then we'd go to Chicago to meet the ad people. Then we'd come back and take about five to six weeks off. And if we got picked up, then we'd start again. So we did that for six years because um, that was the length of the contracts at those times. So that's why there's 39 for six years and then it was off the air. Not off the air, but we didn't film any new ones. But you've got to realize that now, you know, you look back and you, you see the show. I mean, I grew up with that. My friends grew up with it. No, well, I grew up with it. You grew up with it. <laughs> so, when, I mean, you're almost like that, the part was real for us. We know your bedroom. We know the stairs that go up to the bedroom. We know Wally. We know the whole cast. And but you don't really know me. You don't because, really know you. Because I'm a different person than the beaver. The beaver is a, a character that I played. And I've played a lot of characters. I've played in my life good characters, bad characters. The beaver is my most famous character. And it's a great one to be in that position because it's a wonderful character. It's an American boy growing up in the 50s. And, you know, and if you look at it, it's really a lot of the things that went on in the 50s. It was a very innocent time. If you look at today's world and the 50s, people at that time thought, you know, we'd just come out of a war, a world war, and they were very, very happy, and it was a, almost a joyous time. Well, you know, you think about it, I just was watching and read that the Beatles mm -hmm. had their 50th anniversary and Ed Sullivan, so you were still seven years ahead of that right. when you started. And yet it's still in that same era of you well, know, the happy time, times. It was, it was a time of innocence. The, the 50s and the 60s, we'd, we'd come out of World War II. The soldiers pretty much got back in the, in the early 40s, but you know, it took them a while to reintegrate. And the country was really running well at that time, and everybody was fairly happy. It was, it was a nice place to live. Did you ever think, though, that um, you would just get the command that you do for all these years. I mentioned in the intro, you're an icon. Well, and, and I don't know, if, I don't don't know think, about that. Well, you're very modest to not say so, but isn't he, ladies and gentlemen, isn't he an icon? <laughs> I mean, you are. You absolutely no, are. No, we, in fact, every year we, we filmed Leave it to Beaver for six years, and every year at the end, from the first year to the last year, we never knew whether we'd come back the next year. Really? You know, because it was a very, very competitive market. But after six years, um, in Hollywood, that's as long as you can sign the contract. And so after six years, we knew we wouldn't come back because by that time, everyone would want a lot more money and a lot more sure. benefits. And so we knew at, at, at the end of six years that it was pretty much over. Well, was it hard to learn your lines at such a young age? No, because I've been on live TV since I was two years old. So my very first job at two years old um, 
was walking into a bar room with cowboys fighting. I'd walk right through them and they'd break chairs over each other and flip all over the place. One of them would pick me up, set me on the bar. I would pound on the bar with my fist. I had on uh, cowboy boots, a 10 gallon hat, six gun and diapers and that's all. And I'd say, I'm the toughest hombre in these parts and you better have my brand. And Ed Wynn, who did the Ed Wynn show at that time, which was a comedy review, would then go into a commercial for pet milk, which was baby formula. So that's the first thing I ever did on television. And once I did that right, all the shows at that time were not videotaped, they were all live. So once as a child you did one show right, you worked all the time because they couldn't take a chance. Because if you walked out there and panicked, forgot your lines, you were in front of a live audience. If that scared you, the other actors had to work around you because if you didn't say your line, uh, there was no way somebody could come out and prop you. Well, how much time did you have to learn a line? Maybe for the show. three or four days. Well, Leave It to Beaver. Uh -huh. Leave It to Beaver, we got the script on Sunday night. We went in and read it on Monday. Um, Tuesday, we went in and we staged the entire show like you do a play where they'd say, okay, on this line, move. If there were any complicated um, plots like things, uh, gadgets or things that we had to deal with, they would be there. And that was it. On, the, on Wednesday, we started shooting at 8 o'clock and shot for the next three days. So it took us a week to do a show, two days of rehearsal and three days of shooting. And how long did it take you to come up with the character? Well, the character was developed. I, it's nothing that I really came up with. I mean, the, the two writers had uh, 14 kids between them, Joey Conley and Bob Mosier. So they knew how kids talked. They knew how kids were. So it wasn't like I went in and just talked. No, but wait a second. Wait, wait, Those were all lines that were written. But wait, who actually goes to the dinner table with a suit and tie like Ward did? Actually, actually, Joe Conley and Bob Mosier every night would go to the, the to dinner with a, with a tie on. <laughs> really? Both the writers. At that time, there, there was a, um, a, a percentage of people that were very much like that. A man would come home. He'd been at the office all day. He didn't change because he didn't really want to get another shirt dirty. So he would go to the table at that time with his suit on, just as he'd come from the office. What's the most, Jerry, what's the most difficult part of knowing that, you know, as you left the show, mm -hmm. uh, to integrate back into, I mean, you went to high school. Well, that was a choice, though. See, I didn't want to continue. In fact, the, the, they had another series developed, and they wanted me as soon as Leave It to Beaver uh, quit to go on with another one, but it was my freshman year in high school. My dad was fully employed. He retired as a superintendent of LA City Schools, but at that time he was a vice principal. And he came to me and my mom too, and they said, do you want to go on and do another series? And I said, no, I want to go to high school and I want to play football. And so for the next four years, and it wasn't that I didn't want to work, because if people called during the summer, then I would go and do whatever shows. So you'll see me in a very few things um, but yes, it was a, a, a choice made by me that I didn't want to continue. I want to continue with that line of questioning. Okay. But before we continue that, I want to go to a clip so people okay. can see some of your early acting okay. and leave it to Beaver. Okay. Okay, let's watch Jerry Mathers. Hey, Mom, how come we're having ice cream? Your father got it. Because the Beaver stayed home all day by himself and he didn't make a fuss about it. Oh. <laughs> That's why we're having ice cream. <laughs> yes, Beaver, I thought you had a very good attitude. A lot of boys your age would have been resentful about it. No, Dad, I wasn't anything about it. We called you about 4 o'clock, but you didn't answer. Well, I guess I wasn't in the house then. Were you out in the backyard? Yeah, I guess I could have been out in the backyard. Couldn't I, Wally? Yeah, yeah, I guess you could have been. Well, Beaver, tomorrow you have a whole day to do anything you want. What are your plans? Well, I might go to the movies. We're going to the movies, huh? Fine. Yeah, I might go to the movies and win a bicycle, and I kind of feel lucky. <laughs> win a bicycle at the movies? Yeah, they raffle them off. <laughs> what makes you so sure you're going to win one? Well, I just have a feeling. Uh, Mom, could we be excused? Certainly. Jerry Mathers, ladies and gentlemen, we've got him here in our studio. Jerry. Right before that clip, I was asking about integrating back, essentially mm -hmm. 
into uh, high school and things. Right. Was it difficult? I mean, were you, did they call you by your real name? Did they call you the thief? What, what was it like? Were you, were you bullied in school? No, I was on the football team. So <laughs> I was on the freshman football team and the JV football team. So I started with the team and the school I went to. Uh, my dad had been a coach at a private school. It was Notre Dame High School. And so I had gone there when I was like three and four years old before I st uh, started leaving to Beaver. So it was always my dream to go there. Um, it was an all-boys school, and um, if you were on the football team, you had a lot of very big friends, so no one gave you any trouble. Was high school a good time for you? Very good. And, and as I said, it wasn't that I didn't want to work, and I did work during the summers, mm -hmm. but the school said if you want to come here, you can't go out and do TV shows or movies. And that was just a choice I made because I wanted to be with kids. As I say, I had a private tutor, which is probably the best education in the world. It's the education of the kings and queens of Europe. I was one-on-one -on -one with a teacher from the LA Unified School District um, for my entire elementary school years. So I got a great education, but I wanted to be with other kids and, mm -hmm. and socialize. And so that's what I did. Well, what's the pluses and minuses of being associated with this character? Theodore Cleaver. Well, oh, it, once the show ended, what was the pluses and minuses for you? Well, I, I was able to put myself through college. I was able to buy my first house. I mean, I, I was a, a wealthy person from what I had made myself. It wasn't inherited. It was what I had done as a child. So it's been a boon to me all my life. Of I've, I've gotten a lot of other work as an actor because of it. I'm here today. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Leave it to Beaver. Who knows where I'd be? I just can't even imagine what it would be like to leave a show like that and then make your, to just leave it and then stay out of show business for a while. Well, I didn't stay out. As I say, I worked during the summers. Um, in fact, during the summers I used to go, I had great jobs. Because of Leave it to Beaver, my summer job, I was a cowboy at a place like Knott's Berry Farm, but they were in um, North Carolina. And so I would go out and um, rob banks at this thing. And as you came out, you'd shoot. And I had a, a wonderful time. So it, it, there were always things that came from Leave it to Beaver that I did um, because it was such a good show. But well, what about the negative side? That's what I wanted to get to. What um, the negative of having? Was there any, has there been? I haven't found it yet. If it comes, I'll come back and tell you. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Now, is it true, true mm -hmm. or false, is it true that uh, you had a band in high school? I did. Beaver and the Trappers. We played all the, in fact, we recorded for Atlantic <laughs> Records. And where did that go? Um, basically, it was number one in Hawaii and Alaska. And what, I, what the, the reason for that was is that during the summers, then I would go play all the amusement parks in the Midwest and East Coast. And that was my summer job. And that's how I bought my first car. Did you get to wisely, because you hear about, you know, you, the kids in um, motion pictures and television are successful, they lose all their money. You said you were able to buy a house, but were you able to invest wisely? Um, yes. Yeah, uh, under, the, under the Coogan laws, a certain amount is put away. But the problem is, and I won't tell you which ones, but some of my contemporaries were not only supporting their own family, and the, neither one of the parents worked, but a couple of them were actually supporting extended families, like aunts and uncles. And those poor children were told, you know, if you don't work this week, this whole family doesn't eat. Now, my dad was fully employed, so, you know, it was nice to be able to have Leave it to Beaver, but it wasn't anything that my family really needed, and I didn't have that kind of pressure put on me. Now, I had been told that there was over, like, 5,000 kids trying for this Beaver. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, was there ever a time in which, after you got the part, mm -hmm. you met any of those other well, people, yes, because... Or they later became famous on another show. That I, all that, that I don't know, but I know that some of them that were on the original interview, what they did when they say 5,000, um, there were 5,000 people on the interview, but it was for all the parts. It just wasn't for the beaver. So they wanted, you know, they wanted a person for Eddie Haskell. They wanted Lumpy. They wanted, of course, Wally and the beaver. So, you know, and actually Leave it to Beaver was a very, very long interview because we kept going back probably probably four, maybe six, eight weeks, we'd go like twice a week and they'd line you up with different people and they'd, you'd have read a few lines. But I had just joined the Cub Scouts and I had my very, very first meeting. And so um, my mom said, oh, by the way, Jerry, I'm going to pick you up after school and then we're going to go back to that interview. And I said, well, I can't go. 
And my mom kind of said, what do you mean you can't go? I said, well, I have a Cub Scout meeting tomorrow. <laughs> and she said, well, you know what? Your Cub Scout meeting is until about a half hour or 45 minutes after. So we can go there and come back because this won't be like the 5,000 people. They're down to like the last five or six. And I said, well, okay, because I'm the kind of person that likes to be on time. So I went, and of course, they started taking everybody else, and I was the very last one in. And I was getting very antsy, and when I walked in, the, Joe Conley and Bob Mosier, the producer, said, you know, Jerry, you seem a, a little agitated or nervous today. Is there something wrong? And I said, yes, I'm going to be late for my Cub Scout meeting. Can I leave? And they said yes, and so I walked right in and right out. And my mom said, Jerry, what happened in there? How come you came out so quick? And I said, well, I told them I had a Cub Scout meeting, and they said I could go. My mom said, that probably wasn't the best thing to tell them, because <laughs> we've been on this interview for quite a few weeks, and now they don't think you want to work. And they called that night and said I had the job as the beaver, because they'd rather have a little boy that wanted to be a Cub Scout than an actor. And we're so glad they chose you, well, too. That's how I got the job. A wonderful story. Yeah. <laughs> you have an, a clip of you with Frank Sinatra. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was this was actually before Leave It to Beaver. I did, you know, I, I worked with Hitchcock. I did two movies with Bob Hope. I worked with Alan Ladd. So I was a, a working actor in a lot of shows that you wouldn't know because they were all live and there's not only not any record of them. But I worked all the time before Leave It to Beaver. Well, let's watch this clip. Sounds it's a brief good. Clip. Okay, let's watch. Hi. How's the battle going? Not so good. I've seen you before. Are you a doctor? Nope. My name's Frank. What's yours? Arnold Gordon Malty Jr. My folks don't call me Junior. They call me Gordy. Okay, Gordy. Say, the doctors here at the hospital tell me you're a pretty good soldier yourself. The Indians are going to wipe out the stagecoach this time. See? Mm-hmm. Doesn't look very good, does it? Mm -mm. But I think I came just in time. Got some reinforcements. Gee, thanks. This is a battlefield, make-believe and real. The real battle is the one Gordy Noldy is fighting with tuberculosis. Welcome back. Jerry Mathers is our guest. Jerry, it was rumored, and I know you've, you've talked about this on other shows, that you had died. And that thing, like, Eddie Haskell was a, a porn star. Well, I mean, Eddie all... Haskell being a porn star, John Holmes, who actually was a porn star, actually told people he was on Leave it to Beaver <laughs> That's how and, and played Eddie Haskell. Okay, And, so and Ken actually... Osmond, who was a police officer at the time, actually sued him and won the case that he had uh, defamed his name. Oh, I, I never knew that. Yeah. I never knew that. So you actually could pinpoint where that rumor started. That so how was... did the rumor start you, that you were dead? Um, you know, that I really don't know. Um, I got up one morning and a lot of people were, had been calling, started calling, and it said that uh, an actor had been killed in Vietnam, and it was Jerry <clears throat> Mathers of Leave it to Beaver. At that time, I had friends that were reporters, and they said that people used to scan casualty list just to see if they could find any name that for some reason rang a bell, and maybe there was a person with a, a similar or the same name. I was in the Air Force, because after I finished high school, I enlisted in the Air Force and spent six years in the Air Force and then the Air National Guard. So I was in the service, and people knew that. It wasn't anything I hid. So probably someone saw the same name or a similar name and said, oh, I know he's in the service. It must be him. Interesting. People ever come up to you and say, uh, wait a second, I thought you were dead? Actually, not so much fans, because they pretty much knew it, but people that I'd gone to high school with, they would do that. They because they shocked. Yeah, because they had actually known me, and they would, they would see me in the Los Angeles area, even like five, six years later sometimes, and they'd say, well, you know, you're not dead, are you? And I'd say, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk now about you were on Broadway. You were on, in Hairspray. Hairspray. Um, what was that like for you to go from, you know, the, the small screen television, and I know you were motion pictures as well, and now you're going to be live in front of an audience. What was that like for you? Well, I've done a lot of plays. Uh, I've, I've toured one play for, that was written by Schiller and Weisskopf, who were Norman Lear's head writers for 18 months. So that was something that I was very, very familiar with working on the stage. But, yeah, but going to Broadway, Broadway is, is something Broadway. that I never thought I would be able to do. 
And if you ever told me I was going to be on Broadway, I would have told you and you gave me the categories. I would never say I was going to be in a musical and singing and dancing. But <laughs> Why? Why? Well, because it's not anything that I've ever trained for. I've never trained to be a dancer. A dancer on Broadway is usually somebody who from usually elementary school or right into high school has been trained to be a dancer and singer. And so when the opportunity came up, um, I knew I'd have to train myself. So I spent about uh, 15 weeks singing and actually um, uh, tr learning all the dances. My wife helped me at my, uh, we were going together at the time, but um, now we're married and she helped me Your with a lot. Your beautiful wife. My beautiful yes, wife, absolutely. But she helped me a lot with it because there were a lot of dance steps. And it was, um, I trained actually for about uh, 18 weeks to be able to do it before I even went back to New York. And my fans were so supportive. Hairspray at that time was almost ready to close. The night I started, it went to a full house. Um, the entire time I was there, which was about three and a half months, um, they, we did standing room only business. Very so good. My fans really supported me, and I always thank them for it. But because of that, it made it very easy because suddenly I knew that I was doing it right and people wouldn't have come back if I'd have gotten terrible reviews or, you know, not been good on it. They, they would have said, oh, well, you know, he's a nice guy, but he just can't do Broadway. But not only did I do Broadway, but I did Broadway very well. Well, what are you doing? What are you being offered now? Type of, you know, are you turning things down? Yeah, you, because every, or, what people... What actors are doing now, like me, who are uh, known names, are reality shows, and I don't want to have to jump off a, an 80-foot diving board or you all the other things. That, but that's but that's what that's what they're picking actors to do now, especially people like me who are a name. Because if you're going to watch one of those shows, if you see a name you know, that may be one you turn in to watch me do whatever crazy thing they might want me to do. Oh, so, Jerry, you know what I'd love to see you that's do? That's what I'm afraid of, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see you and Tony Dow and Ken Osmond in a home for two yeah. weeks. <laughs> well, actually, we're that. very good friends. That, that would be pretty easy. Tony and, and Ken and I are very, very good friends. So that, that, wouldn't be, that, that would actually be a blessing. But, you know, when you, when you talk about the things that you do on a reality show, and they're not reality shows. I mean, it says reality, but they pretty much know in a lot of ways who's going to win, who's not, mm -hmm. what's going to happen. So it's just nothing I'm interested in. And the nice part is I've reached a point in my career when I don't have to take jobs like that. Well, what jobs would you take? What, what, well, kind of, I, what I, haven't you done that you would love to do? You know what? If you'd have said that a few years ago, I would have said Broadway. Now, I, I'm, I have diabetes, and so what I do is I go all over the country and speak about diabetes because it's it, epidemic proportions. A lot of people have it, and it's something that I know. Um, I was uh, diabetic. I am now pre-diabetic. Now, mine was all weight-related, and there are a lot of people like me that if they just took off a little weight, and if they don't, Sooner or later, they'll be on first pills and then uh, injecting themselves with insulin. So I feel that I can use my celebrity to help other people uh, on something that I've done. That's wonderful. In fact, you told me before the show how that all came about. One moment, you know, you thought everything was fine and you went to see the doctor. Yeah, I, I have a very good friend that's a doctor and it's a personal friend and she comes to a lot of family events and she kept telling me, oh, okay, Jerry, come on in for a physical because I put on the weight uh, over about three years and it was a lot of weight. It was about 45, 50 pounds heavier than I am right now. And I kept saying, I feel good. I'll see you when I'm sick. And she kept, she knew that I couldn't put on that much weight and be healthy, but she also knew me. So she said, you know what? For Christmas, I'm going to give you a free physical. <laughs> How could I turn that down? I, right. I went back about you know, three weeks later, and she said, how would you like to see your kids graduate from high school? I said, sure. She said, and get married, have grandchildren, all those things. I said, that's what I'm looking forward to as a father. She said, you'll be dead in three to five years because your blood sugars are out of control. You have raging diabetes. I had absolutely what I knew of as no symptoms. So I said to myself, I, life is too good. I took off the weight, and I'm now pre-diabetic. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Have, have you met with a lot of people who um, went to the doctor and have thanked you for well, yeah, but a lot of people. That. A lot of people just don't really understand even what diabetes is. If if you're overweight, 30, 40 pounds, it's very, very likely that your body just can't supply enough insulin, and that's what basically diabetes is. And are you 
Is this an, a full-time position for you to go It's out? not full-time, but I, I go all over, the, all over the country. In fact, what I do, I say it's kind of like fishing. I go, I talk about Leave it to Beaver, I talk about working with Bob Hope, Alfred Hitchcock, Frank Sinatra, and then I just, at the end, maybe the last 15 minutes, start talking about my life now and diabetes, and it just kind of flows into it, and people don't even really realize that they're learning a lot of propaganda about how to help themselves. I'm glad you're doing this work. It's very helpful. I, I wanted to play a name game with you. Okay. First thing that comes into your mind. Okay. I'll rattle off a few people. Okay. Barbara Billingsley. Very, mind. very nice lady, a, a socialite, uh, a huge um, giving person. She literally gave away, she was married to uh, a doctor and they were very, very wealthy and she literally gave away hundreds of thousands of dollars to different charities. So, and she was as nice as June Cleaver in a, in a different way, um, but just as nice as June Cleaver. She treated you like a mother? No. no, I mean, I knew I had a mother. She would be like your favorite teacher. I went there every day, she would help me, you know, if I had trouble with the line or whatever. But no, she was, I knew I had my mother and she was, as I say, more like a favorite teacher. How about Hugh Beaumont? Hugh Beaumont was actually a Methodist minister. He came back from really? World War II, went to a theological school, and when he graduated, he asked for a very, very poor congregation because he wasn't married. And of course, when a, a pastor asked for it, he gave, got the very poorest. And suddenly he got married and started having kids, and he couldn't support them with the congregation that he was with. And so he started taking jobs as act, in acting because he could work during the week and it wasn't a steady job. And so that's why he actually became an actor. But his um, famous character was a detective named uh, Sam Spade, I believe. But anyway, it was a detective that always had a bottle of bourbon, smoked cigarettes. To get a confession, he'd take you and pound you up against the wall. <laughs> and it was nothing like Hugh Beaumont. And I think when he got the character of Ward on Leave it to Beaver, it was a character, I think in a lot of the bedroom scenes when he's talking to the beaver, you can see that minister coming out. Yeah. Jerry, my name game has to stop and the show has to stop. It went too quickly. Uh, I have all the answers. Maybe I'll come back. <laughs> I hope so. Sounds Maybe. Good. You have to come back. Well, thank you. All right. Well, thank you. Appreciate your being here. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Well, thank you. Well, that's it for another edition of Ken Boxer Live. Now, be sure to tune in for some of our upcoming shows, which will include figure skater Ty Babylonia, actors Alan Thicke, Lost in Space star Billy Moomy, and actress Mariel Hemingway. These are some shows that I know you just won't want to miss. Also remember to catch us on the web at KenBoxerLive.com. Okay, so for my guest Jerry Mathers and for my director Nick Ferretti and my entire production crew, I'm Ken Boxer saying we'll see you next week on Ken Boxer Live. Good night, everybody.